homeostasis. You should know this word from basic science classes and uh, biology, homeostasis. What does it mean? Something about regulation within internal, within regulation of an internal environment within narrow limits, something like that. Um, we just finished talking about the nervous system. Um, now we have the endocrine system. So we're moving through a lot of different systems. We have the, dig we have the digestive system, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the nervous system, and now we're looking at the endocrine system. The endocrine system doesn't get a lot of attention until you start thinking about um, hormones specifically. So here's a disproportioned drawing that I've made here. And there are various things that are pointed out, not the typical things that you would ask a child to identify in a diagram. Normally you're aiming for stomach, whatever. So what are all these things here? You should be able to recognize a few, but uh, this is the endocrine system and it's responsible for producing and secreting a lot of hormones into the bloodstream. The pituitary gland can also be identified up here. Thyroid. Adrenal glands are sitting on top of the kidneys. They're physically above the kidneys. The pancreas is probably the most well-known, and the pancreas is also involved in digestion. You have learned a little bit, but uh, the pancreas has a dual role here. It also fits in the endocrine system because of the hormones it produces, and the gonads, which would be the ovaries or the testicles, if you're a woman or a man. So these hormones, um, that are produced by these various glands, and we're only going to focus on a few here, they get secreted into the blood, and they're like chemical messengers which will move around the blood to different parts of the body and affect different muscles, affect different uh, metabolic pathways to cause your body to do various types of things. And one of the most important ones we're going to talk about in this particular uh, unit for IV biology are the hormones that are produced by the pancreas and they help us to regulate blood sugar levels. So diabetes is also going to be discussed here. And that's just a cool looking tattoo. I don't think that's real. Maybe not. So homeostasis, we're gonna jump into what the definition of a homeostasis is and uh, using this example of a bath when I moved to Japan, I was so impressed because I can actually adjust the temperature of my bath. And uh, I think it's pretty accurate. I've never actually tested it. I should borrow a thermometer from school to test to see the accuracy of the entire thing. Um, but basically what it does is I can set my temperature to be a comfortable 40 degrees, for example. If the temperature gets higher than 40 degrees, then my super duper bathtub robot will detect this temperature rise and it will turn off the heater or stop producing hot water and the temperature will fall and return back to my desired temperature of 40 degrees. That's pretty smart. Uh, if the temperature falls, it starts to get cold, fall asleep in the bathtub, now the water temperature dips down to 36, starting to get a little bit chilly here because the heat from my body is dissipating into the water. Well, the thermostat detects it and says, okay, let's bring it back to his desired temperature. And the heater is switched on or more hot water is produced and the temperature rises. It's a pretty basic, simple idea. And that's exactly what homeostasis is. If we're talking about body temperature or blood glucose level or uh, blood pH level or blood carbon dioxide level or any of these things, they're all regulated in this way and some part of the body is detecting that something's weird and causing certain things to actually change as a result. So homeostasis is the maintenance of the internal environment within acceptable limits despite possible fluctuations in the external environment. So the fact that the temperature can be outside, uh, can be really hot outside, but inside our bodies we can still maintain a temperature that's relatively constant. Mm. If the outside, the pH of the swimming pool around us is different from the pH that's within our blood, we can still be able to regulate the pH there. So here are a couple of the things that are regulated before we come back to the negative feedback bit. 
blood pH, carbon dioxide concentration, blood glucose concentration, and body temperature are four examples of things that our body tries to regulate. So an important term here is negative feedback right here. So negative feedback is not specific to homeostasis, but it's specific to any kind of process where the result of something will actually go back and regulate the mechanism to actually decrease, to do the opposite effect. So if you end up with too much sugar at the end, too much sugar, then that too much sugar should feed back and then tell the system to reduce the amount of sugar. If there's too little sugar, that should, that should feed back and negatively cause the amount of sugar to actually increase. So it's called negative because you produce the opposite effect. Positive feedback is not a homeostasis type mechanism, but positive feedback, we'll see examples of that in, for example, the reproduction unit when a woman is going into labor and she's uh, the oxytocin hormone concentrations will actually cause the uterine contractions to get stronger and stronger. So it's feeding back but increasing the effect. So that's called positive feedback. So here, negative feedback, the control of a process by which the result of the same process uh, leads to an increase or decrease in the effect and is always reversed. Now, water balance as well. We're going to learn about that in a separate unit. unit uh, the kidney, nephrons, and water regulation.